Do you want to know how to escalate your privileges to root by abusing a poorly written script? This video is for you. Let's get started. Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everybody, welcome to this new video. Hopefully it's the last episode of the Basilic challenge. It's a really great challenge. We've learned so many things. Code review, port scanning, how to jail escape from Python, get in a reverse shell and uh, yeah, cracking a password or decrypting the password after breaking the public key. We've done a lot of things here and I encourage you to watch the previous episodes if you haven't done so. You'll find the links in the description box. So we are here now as user Basilic. I'm not sure what does he have in the home directory other than the secret. So we saw that with user Python in the previous uh, episodes, we couldn't uh, actually read that file, but since now that we are Basilic, we can safely read it. And this is the third flag. Perfect. Now let's see what we can do. Are there, are there any other services running here? Netstat is not installed, so let's use Elsoft. Nothing? Mm-hmm. Okay. On name dash A and cat etc release. Yeah, Debian version nine could be vulnerable to exploits we've covered in previous challenges. So make sure to watch those. Um what else do we have? Any processes running as root? Rep root. Mm -hmm. Nothing really interesting here. Just the usual stuff. Do we have any access to an SUID bit? String uh, script. Perm 4440. 4000. Dev null. Okay, nothing. user SUID. So we have like the usual stuff. I don't see anything interesting here. Sudo. Uh, yeah, sudo. We're talking about sudo. What can we do with sudo? The password, we already have it. And oh, okay, we have the user Basilic can run as root Python this script. And what is this? I guess uh, we've seen that already. Nope, that's a new one. URL lib, and then it's taking our input, putting it in a C variable, and then F for the output file. And then it's fetching the same web server, the same one we've been playing with here under burp. Yeah, it's using actually the same parameters and then it's taking the result and writing it in a file. Hmm. So what happens if, uh, let's say, we get a reverse shell using a sudo from here? Let's try something like sudo and then our script. So it's asking for calc. We can give it the same payload as this one like this and the output file well let's just call it temp p and um, I just make sure that I have the listener and that my ngrok is still working yes so let's hit enter what do we have here hmm we've got nothing what do we have under temp P file invalid syntax but this was working here in burp yeah maybe it's related to the quotes or this dollar IFS I'm not sure uh, you know what let's uh, let's try another approach instead of using this string like this I can try to use subprocess module remember from the first or second episode we have talked about that so under module there is the uh, built-ins object and we want to import um, 
p uh, sub process dot p open then uh, normally it accepts a list dot communicate okay let's run it no module named sub process really all lower case send and we get something right so instead of id let's uh, try with netcat directly so we want netcat dash e and then we want the uh, shell bin sh and then i want the uh, host for my callback which is this one and i also want the port so i'm just going to take that put it right here and just do some formatting. All right, let's send it. It's taking some time, it's a good thing. And we get a shell back, cool. So the cool thing about this approach is that we don't need the spaces anymore. So I'm going to exit, listen once more, grab that entire payload and let's run it in our shell, SSH shell as sudo, paste in this and in the file, just going to type the same file. Okay, so now it's taking time. It's not returning right away and we get something. Ooh, we get a shell as Python. Hmm, I thought we would have a shell as root. Uh, that's not the case. That's a bummer. I guess that's because root is fetching that URL, but actually the process that's getting run to, you know, return that value is actually the web server. So that explains why it's uh, Python and not root. So essentially what we can control is just the uh, output of this call. Whatever output we have from here, we put it in a file that we control. And because this is script is running as root, we can potentially poison any file, including those owned by root. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, we already have access as Python. Remember this vulnerability right here? If I type ID, I'm Python. And if I go to opt web server, and list the directory, everything here is owned by Python, which is good. The vulnerability exists in this file. So if we cat that file, so currently the content of temp p contains the result, which is nothing but this line right here. The script sent a HTTP call to this web server using the JSON calc uh, path, and then it's try trying to execute our reverse shell, and then we got the result back. So what if I can change that? Instead of returning JSONify L, I can return something so simple that fits into one line, and that could give me root access. Okay, think a little bit about it. Um, the first thing we can add is a line in etc passwd as root but this would require to get the file and then add a line at the end of it or maybe change the entire file and just put one line containing our user that would work as well i guess the other way is poisoning the etc sudoers file giving our user basilic all access so if i uh, sudo cat etc sudoers if I could type. So we should add the line like this. Actually, let's just copy this and uh, should have something like this. So how can we do that? We know that we control the line here because we are Python, right? So what we can do is use sed. We want to grab the JSONify L and we want to put in our value, which is this one. And we want to change it globally. And the 
file we want to change is basilic dev website. If I type enter, as you can see, now the server would return this line, which we can then use to poison the uh, etc sudoers. We can also use an interactive shell and change it using VI or Nano or whatever, if it's installed here. Not sure if Nano is installed. Yep, Nano or VI, all would work. But I don't need it, so I'm not going to do it. So once I'm happy with that, all I can do is use the I option to change the uh, file's content. And so now if I cat, the content of Basilic Dev website. Voila, we have our new value. Now what happens if I go to the web server and fetch that page? So JSON calc and I really don't care about any of these. Just want to put a dummy value. But we still have the old value because we need to actually uh, restart the server. So we're going to grep for Python. So this is our service running or process. So I can kill this process ID. Of course we lost the shell, but that doesn't matter. I hope that the services gets back up. So if I refresh the page, yes, it does get back up and we have our value getting returned. Perfect. So now what we can do is um, run our sudo calc test script. And now we will provide any value and we want to actually poison the etc sudoers file. Hit enter. And if everything goes well, if I type sudo dash L, I should get all privileges. Drum rolls, hit enter. Yes, I have everything. Now I can just type sudo su and I am root, ganz gut. If I type id, I am indeed root. Now if I go to slash root, I have the root file, not foot, but root. And this is the fourth flag. Perfect. I hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you did, then thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, hit that ring bell to receive the videos once they go live. Don't forget to watch the previous episode. There are also other challenges in the playlist penetration testing. I'm sure you're going to learn a thing or two. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, go find some bugs.